Man uses a creature as a mating slave in a mysterious island. This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain an action sci-fi horror film called Cold Skin. Okay. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Every single one of these re recap um uh channels are doing now are now saying this. Like who started it? Who started Ew. Ew. I don't know. This looked like a demon that would be at the bottom of the ocean. We are never very far from those we hate. For this very reason, Bags. we shall never be truly close to those we love. The haunting thoughts of the young Englishman go on and on as he sets sail for a remote South Atlantic island to okay. work as a meteorologist. Yes, sir. 450349 cheered. X100. Shut up, monkey. No, nigga, I don't know who you fucking talking to, right? But if you talking to me about yeah, one more time, I'll ooh ah inside your asshole, right? I'll make sure all my chimpanzees come and rip you up and fuck you. So don't get, don't don't do me like that now. Okay, don't don't do that. While his thoughts drown him down, Captain Axel Ew. approaches him and lights a cigarette, telling him that they're almost there. Why are they all In ugly? In September 1914, they finally arrive on the island where no one greets them. The man had been sent to replace another meteorologist stationed at the island, but there seems to be no sign of anyone. Oh. Captain Axel accompanies the young man to look for the previous meteorologist to ensure he's safe. So, they got on a ship, got to an island. How do they end up having sex with a, uh, slave? They come across a lighthouse and knock on it, but no one answers. The young man forces the door open and finds the only other person on the island, Gruner the signal technician, who greets them both coldly. When Captain Axel asks about the former weather official, Gruner answers that the man they're looking for died from typhus. What's Gruner typhus? What is typhus? Mm. Infectious disease that include, uh, and so it's just a disease, I don't know, I don't know. It's a group of infective diseases. Okay, nice seems unbothered by their presence and walks around nude. Irritated, oh. Captain Axel and the young man leave the lighthouse. When Captain Axel bids him goodbye, the man wanders around the island as he deems life ahead of him there. Like the previous weather official, he must dwell into the intensity and direction of the winds for 12 months before someone replaces him. Okay. When he returns to the cabin to fix his things... That's depressing! You're alone on an island for 12 months? What are you eating? Do they like door dash you stuff from the fucking sky? I couldn't do it. He finds the previous meteorologist's diary. How much you get paid? His name is Aldor. Inside, he sees sketches, a photograph of Aldor's wife, and even a lighthouse door. Inside, he sees sketches, a photo. Interesting. Graph of Aldor. Mm. Aldor's wife. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. And even a lighthouse drawing with strange creatures beside it. The next morning, he finds strange rock circles on the sand. He then heads near the coast with a telescope to start work. As he peeks through the binoculars, he sees the naked man doing a stretch as preparation- for a long day of doing nothing. That night, while he's reading, he hears rustling outside his door, to which he thinks is Gruner. However, the noises get We're not going to speak on it. With scratching and growling <laughs> We're going to keep it pushing. We're going to keep it pushing. Suddenly, a reptilian hand appears at the bottom of the door, which he immediately steps on. Parry the platypus? The unknown creature to get agitated. When he hears more, he hides under the floorboards while they try to enter his cabin. They attack his place, but notice that there's no one inside. When the footsteps stop, he looks through a small hole in the floorboards door. The creature peeps through as well, causing him to poke its eye with a knife. Oh my Being God. Afraid, he locks himself underground for the whole night. He stabbed Perry. Now when Phineas come up there with fur and start blasting your shit, you're gonna be real pressed. He calls Gruner the next day, pleading to be led into the lighthouse, but Gruner refuses. Determined to fight, he heads back home and spends the whole day reinforcing it. Okay. With a newfound rifle among the baggage of the cabin, the man feels ready to fight against the unknown monsters. I'm just mad that I got, I, I just saw a dingling flopping in the distance too. That man was like 400 meters away and you could still see dangling slinging. He has a fat pee pee. That thing thick and long. That's ridiculous. The night comes and the swarm of beasts start appearing from the darkness, slowly approaching the cabin. He braces himself as he shoots them one by one. He eventually has no choice but to start a fire. What since is this there Call of Duty Zombies? Like, 
The fire makes them flee, but it burns the cabin. He runs away from his burning house. Fortunately, it rains before the cabin completely burns down. The following day, he sees Gruner leave the lighthouse and discreetly follows him down to the rocks. Okay. When he is about to ambush Gruner, a blue female sea creature attacks him and he- No. No, 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 no. I know that's not where we're going. <laughs> okay, 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 Chad. I know that's not where we're going, but let's keep playing. He points his gun at her. Gruner stops him from shooting her by showing she is vulnerable. The young man takes advantage of offering Gruner some of his supplies in return for shelter. Gruner then calls the man a friend for the sea creature to acknowledge him as one. A little while later, they head into Friend's cabin to gather his supplies. He uh, realizes okay. that the previous weather official didn't die from typhus, but from the sea creatures. Yeah. However, Gruner tells him that they need to head back to the lighthouse since it's nearing sunset, and the creatures might attack. They lift the supplies into the beacon, and after a long walk, Friend passes out. One morning, Friend is awakened by the female sea creature licking his hand, trying to heal his burns. It turns- Chat, no. No, chat. No. No, chat, bro. This is not about to happen. It's out that he's been asleep for two days. Friend then finds Gruner and takes an inventory of their ammunition and explains to him that the creature, which he calls a toad, is like a dog who will not abandon her master no matter how cruel- No, you're making it worse. You're making it worse. Stop giving descriptions. Stop it. Please stop it. You're stop giving descriptions. He is. Friend gazes at awe in her, fascinated by her existence, giving her the impression that she's different from the others. However, Gruner warns him not to trust her entirely, believing that her silent and calm personality hides evil intentions. Gruner then shows Friend more of the lighthouse and takes him up to the top. Friend wonders why Gruner chose to stay on the island when he had the opportunity to leave with Gruner's Friend gonna die. However, Gruner tells him that he will never come back to the civilized world now that he is a master of his own destiny. Still, Friend tells Gruner that this he This man is staying on this island for blue alien cooch. Blue fish cooch. This man got Dory, found a Dory with legs, and now he's like, I need to pipe. will come aboard when he sees the next ship come by, to which Gruner wishes him good luck. Later that day, Friend contemplates how a few days of isolation recently had changed him. As he fixes his things, he's surprised by the creature's presence, but still, he observes her as she ignorantly eats a candle. As he's trying to explain to her the use of a candle, Gruner calls him up, commanding him to bring his rifle. That night, Fred watches Gruner as he prepares for the attack. The older man instructs him what to do and fires the flare gun, uh, which signals okay. the beginning of a long night. On the Why other did hand, he do while the female creature wails into the sky, a crowd of sea creatures. On the other hand, while the female creature wails into the sky. Chat, if they have sex with this thing, I'm in this dream. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, it's just gonna be the end of that. Is that what happens? If this thing gets uh, intercourse with, we're, we're done. A crowd I'm, of I'm, sea I'll let creatures know. barrels towards them, and Gruner starts shooting. However, Friend feels overwhelmed as he remains in his position and slowly walks backwards until he passes out. Gruner is left alone, fighting wow. the appalling swarm of Wow, he's such a puss, monsters. bro. The following day, Gruner is enraged at Friend's ineffectiveness, telling him to fetch water instead. Friend then gets the water. And so you mean to tell me his life was in danger and he passed out? This man is wag, bro. Orange Lingo cheered. X100. Hi, this is my first Steam. I watch you on YouTube. Steam? I watch you on YouTube? Steam? I don't know how to spell, bro. We're about to see a man have intercourse with an avatar, and you're talking about some Steam. Back, he hears a pounding and wailing in Gruner's room, and to his surprise, he sees Gruner thrusting himself into the sea creature. He then immediately leaves. I'll see y'all Sunday. Why, bro? Why? I don't understand. Why? Devin Cole, you cheered. X100. Imagine being broke. Could never be me. W stream, though. I, should, I, I feel you, Devin. I feel you, Devin. I don't know who you calling out, but I feel you, Devin. Later that day, Gruner and Friend eat lunch in awkward silence. 
Fran cannot confront him as he feels guilty and uncomfortable at the same time. I'm uncomfortable However, too. However, Bruder breaks the tension as he bangs the table, telling Fran that he only has one last chance left. That this night, man, Bruder this man bred with some, was, was having sex with something he considered a dog. And that's also a fish creature. Is that not zoo, zoophilia, zoophilia, zoo, zoo? And I mean, it. Bruder catches the attention of the creatures as he takes the flare gun. When the monsters appear, Fran is frightened again, causing Gruner to lock Fran outside on the balcony, leaving him to fend for himself against the monsters. Despite hearing gunshots and Fran's pleas outside, Gruner falls asleep. As the sun rises, Gruner is surprised to see Fran alive, covered in blood, gazing blankly at him. Oh my god! Months pass, and the two he men get that, into though. a routine when the creatures attack that. several nights in a row, forcing them to keep vigil. Days are always the same, nights are getting longer, and only nature keeps them sane. They manage to coexist, where Friend's everyday task is to fetch water while Gruner maintains their weapon. Okay. One day, Friend speculates that the creatures are returning to the lighthouse to reclaim the female sea creature. Mm. However, he still wonders why she allows her species to get killed and why they don't attack on some nights. True. Gruner doesn't care as to why the creatures come and plans to exterminate them all. How do you find it attractive enough to get stiff? Have you been like away from society that long? Like you have to get hard for the, I just uh, I'm sorry I'm just I'm 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 ugh. later on friend visits his old faded cabin to reclaim some of his belongings only to discover how he has changed his appearance as he looks at himself in a mirror Tristan Tate this man been watching he, he <laughs> oh my lord he trims his beard hoping to have some sense of his old self on his way back to the lighthouse he comes across a massive whale skeleton and picks up a piece. Still, there are no attacks that night, making him believe that the lulls between the fighting are often worse than the battles themselves. Still, they take advantage to prepare for the next attack. While okay. Fran wanders around, he sees the creature and approaches her for the first time as he touches her cold skin. He grows to like the strange being and gives her the name Anaris. So, so he be, he be putting his pee pee in coldness too? So it's not even warm, oh. While Gruner uses her for his ends as a servant and sex slave. One evening, Gruner invites Friend to play chess. Ah! As they play, the young man shares his observations and hypothesis on the existence of the sea creatures. However, Gruner asks him to shut his mouth and play, urging Friend to perform a checkmate. Gruner then picks up his gun and points it towards the young man's direction as he perceives a creature behind him. Oh, I thought back. he was about to blast his ass some chess. The monsters are already on the attack. They run into the higher point of the lighthouse as more and more monsters arrive. They fight with their rifles but are getting overwhelmed as the attack came too sudden. Yeah. Still, they decide to go up to the lantern pane where the light illuminates. Unfortunately, Gruner is badly bitten on the foot as he flees upstairs after locking himself inside the pane. Who cares? Raise your hand if you care. Raise your hand if you care he got bit. Raise your hand. Cause, cause I don't. I don't. Someone said, why are they still, why are they, uh, why are they still there? One of them, it's their job to be there. And the other guy doesn't want to go to civilization for whatever reason. Cause he say, I control my destiny. Kilosa underscore cheered X100. I got my hands in my pockets. What does that mean? What, is that, what does that translate to? What does that mean? What does that mean? What? What does that mean? They spend the night up there while the creatures try to reach them through the glass partition. Thinking that this is his end, Gruner sings a tragic love Can song you until please the sun die? rises and the monsters leave. No. That morning, Anaris takes care of Gruner's bitten foot as she sticks. Tell me why I thought she was sucking. Oh my god. Oh guys, yo, I'm tw this is tweaking me out, bro. I'm not gonna lie. This this is making me feel so uncomfortable. It's Her beyond into belief. The wound. They cannot survive oh another my war goodness. as they are running out of supplies, ammunition, and will. Later that day, Fred perceives a ship from the distance while he roams. He immediately runs inside to get the flare gun. Afraid of having no one to hate, Gruner restrains Friend as he's about to shoot, pinning what? him to the ground. Anaris tries to protect Friend, which enrages Gruner, causing him to walk out with the flare gun. Feeling frustrated, Friend oh yells at Gruner, telling him that he's afraid to be left behind and fight alone. A little while later, Friend finds a way to communicate with Anaris by showing her a boat that he carved out of bone, hoping okay. that she would understand. Anaris then leads him to an abandoned rowboat on the shore, away from the lighthouse. 
There at we the go. Lighthouse, the young man tells Gruner about the boat, but Gruner says he knows about it, informing him that a Portuguese man used it to get away from a shipwreck, but the creatures killed him. Okay. He also claims that the ship's cargo contained dynamite, but he assumes that they're all waterlogged. Meanwhile, Friend is interested in diving into the shipwreck with an atmospheric diving suit, but Gruner what disapproves, the hell they get telling that from? Friend that what he's proposing is a suicide mission. I'm getting tired of Gruner, bro. The only thing he cares about is shooting, shooting fish aliens and having sex with them. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that concerns his life. This is this is ridiculous. One afternoon, the young man paints the rowboat with hopes of making it work. He then hears a howling from the distance, only to find Daenerys enjoying a swim nearby. As he removes his clothes, he slowly approaches her as if he's going to kiss her. Unbeknownst to Friend and Daenerys, Gruner is watching. Back at the lighthouse, while Friend is reading a book, Gruner. Is that what would happen to us? Is that what I'm hearing? Like, like if we were alone with this female fish so long, we would just get hard? And, like, no, I don't believe that, bro. I don't believe it, bro. I don't. I don't. I don't. This is, this is, oh my God. Thank you, made in heaven, bro. Thank you, made in heaven, bro. But, oh my God. Hands him a diving suit and changes his mind after witnessing what they did on the pool, secretly hoping that friend will die in the attempt due to jealousy. Jesus. The following day, they row out to the shipwreck using the boat. The young man explains a rope tug is their only way to communicate while Friend is underwater, telling Gruner that he will tug the rope three times if he needs air supply. He then wears an old diving suit searching for the crates carrying dynamite while Gruner controls the string from the boat. While underwater, Friend finds the container and immediately hooks them up. After hooking up several small boxes, Friend finds an infant sea creature peeking through his suit, causing okay. him to fall. He tugs the rope and starts to panic as more of the creatures surround him. Gruner is just watching the rope, on the verge of abandoning Friend. <laughs> However, as the young man releases himself from the suit and swims up into the boat, where Gruner immediately helps him up. When they return home, they immediately check the crates. You didn't question him? Oh, like, oh, why didn't you help me? I was about to die? What is... If I'm him, bro, I would have been killed him in his sleep. Yep. I would have been killed him in his sleep and I would have hopped on the I would have hopped on the boat and ran and discovered that our, our, one our, our boat and away. the others contains explosives that are dry enough to use. The winter is coming. Friend and Gruner devise a plan to entice as many creatures as possible into the lighthouse before detonating the planted dynamite in hopes of scaring them away. However, that night, no one attacked. Three weeks pass in the blink of an eye and Gruner is getting impatient while waiting for the big attack. Friend finds Gruner freezing outside, still waiting in desperation for the creatures. Friend asks him to go inside and defuse the He looked like he about to die. One Please One time, die. Friend and Gruner are waiting for Anaris' catch for their lunch. However, when Gruner discovers that she brings starfish instead of fish, he kicks her, also blaming her for telling her kind about their plan to scare them. The angry man grabs Friend's shirt, telling them that their new plan is to leave the door open, luring them inside for an ambush. That night, Friend leaves the so, so he's like a white man in the 30s. He just kicked his wife for not properly preparing food. I think, I think the cocks are, I think the cocks are relating to this one. Yes, sir. 450349 cheered. X100. I'm going to play VR. Like VR, like this movie, because you want to have sex with the fish thing too? You're so weird, man. The door opened while watching it. Gruner takes the upper ground, preparing to detonate the dynamite. They've been waiting for hours, and it seems like they're not going to attack them. Following Friend's speculation, Gruner drags Anaris beside him, forcing her to wail, assuming that it would attract the creatures. Meanwhile, a sea creature attacks Friend at the main door. He oh. manages to get away from them, but more creatures are coming in. He rushes upstairs while informing Gruner that they're now inside the lighthouse. The creatures attack, but Gruner cannot detonate the explosives, causing Friend to sprint to the top of the lighthouse and reconnect the detonator. Okay. An explosion occurs, killing many sea creatures. Feeling unsatisfied, Gruner goes for a second set of explosives oh. nearer to the lighthouse, knocking Friend and himself out. When Friend wakes up the following day, he immediately searches for Gruner and wakes him up. The young man is relieved when Gruner moves and starts singing a song, which he- Why are you relieved? Why are we relieved? Is the- is the alien fish bad? I think she would be bad. They sent her in- they sent her in as a sacrifice. They sacrificed her cooch and alienhood to kill these two men. That's insane! She joins this time. Meanwhile, there is massive chaos around the beacon. Gruner uses a spear to finish off the wounded and dying toad on the beach. 
After seeing one of the dead creatures wearing a necklace, Friend believes that the species are more civilized than Gruner portrays them. Gruner grabs the pendant and hurls it into the sea, feeling enraged. Later that evening, while they watch for the next attack, Friend hears Anaris and several other creatures mourning the loss of their species. Gruner approaches him and explains that he rescued Anaris as a baby trapped in a net years ago, believing she owed so you raised her since yay high too? So you're a pedo as well? Oh my god. Oh, he just keeps, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse, bro. It him her life. Anaris vanishes, but Gruner assures him that she will crawl back, as she always does. Friend seems to regret what they did, but Gruner remains cold and has no remorse towards the creature's death. One morning, Friend circles the stones in the sand and places the carved bone in the middle hoping to get rescued. On the other hand, Gruner is still preparing for an explosion to continue scaring away the beasts, but there is still no attack that evening. One time, as Friend fixes Gruner's mess while the old man sleeps, he discovers a wedding photo of Gruner with the words, love, 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 written on the back. He recognizes that the woman is- Oh, so he's always like fish just his whole life. Okay, it makes sense. Okay, it makes sense. He always liked fish. Okay, okay, okay. And the image is the same as the woman in the diary, realizing that Gruner is the former weather official and that Gruner isn't entirely devoid of human compassion. As a result, Friend erases his day counting as he understands everything is forgotten, including the very reason for his visit to work. There is no work done other than to stay alive. Mm. Friend then goes into the shore to remove the carved boat when he sees a child sea creature suddenly approach him. Behind the child is Anaris, who appears more confident and bolder together with her troops. So they have breasts too? Friend notices that they want a truce, but Gruner does not and only wants Anaris back, but she refuses. He repeatedly echoes, no one leaves Gruner. While he walks back to the lighthouse, suddenly Gruner fires a flare at the child, fatally striking- oh! <laughs> That nigga don't care! That nigga doesn't care. Even after killing like a thousand, like hundreds of their people, they still wanted a truce. And this nigga said no. Wow. Hit him in the chest. Anaris looks at Friend with doubt and disappointment, leaving him alone. As Gruner continues to fire at them, Friend pursues him. And after a struggle, throws him onto the ground and stabs his leg. Enraged, Gruner stands and gains the up. He threw him down the steps. Stabbed his leg, and you still got bitch slapped. You did all that. He still picked you up and just bitch slapped you. Okay, okay. So we know we know where the main character like hard is. We know he has no strength. The nigga need to hit the gym. Upper hand and tries to murder him with an axe, but friend calls him by his real name, telling him that he's not a murderer. Gruner comes to a pause, drops his. He axe, is a murderer. And utters, love, 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 as if the man regains his former self. He goes outside and looks at the starry night, where the sea creatures slaughter him. A few months later, the next ship arrives to bring over Friend's replacement. The captain mistakenly calls him Gruner upon witnessing a shocking state of existence, which he doesn't bother to correct. <laughs> Gruner leaves Friend with an unwavering legacy of taking his place. The young man keeps his role, thinking that this is the peace that he was looking for. What? What? This was the piece? What? So at the end of the day, they're just saying all men want to have sex with fish. That's all I'm learning. That's all I'm hearing, bruh. The new Gruner stands by the balcony, staring at several boats while Anaris runs into the sea, where she swims freely. From one hell to another, friend found salvation. A world war would signal the end of humanity as we know it, but it gets worse. He left one mysterious past behind only to discover the same thing on an island he was fleeing. Seeking peace through what? nothingness, but in place of silence, he found a monster-plagued inferno. In the end, he finds peace after learning that there is no such thing as life without love, hope without love, or humanity without love. What? That was so fucking stupid.